Hello, and welcome to the Layer 2 show. Today we have Mo Dong from Seller Network. Hello, Mo. Hi, Agne. Uh, thanks for the invite, and uh, I'm very glad to be here. Very welcome. Uh, Mo, please introduce yourself. Uh, what is your background in crypto? How did you get into crypto? And please tell us a little bit about the Seller Network before we dive deep into that. Sure, definitely. Uh, happy to have a quick intro. So uh, I'm Mo, I'm uh, from Seller, and one of the co-founders in Seller Network. And uh, I've been in the crypto space for quite long since my uh, PhD study and uh, you know doing research in distributed systems and high performance networking. This is when I kind of start to first delve into the cryptocurrency technology and the blockchain technology in general. And uh, you know, even during my uh, study, I've been uh, very much interested in uh, scaling solutions, basically, kind of which, how do we make blockchain really be able to be used by uh, not, not only thousands of people or uh, hundreds of thousands of people, but by billions of people around the whole world, right? So this is like, a, you know, how, what we want to achieve. And this is where, you know, we, uh, I myself found my interest in building out uh, and designing scalability solutions to improve the scalability of the blockchain as a whole, not only just as uh, on the layer one. And this is when we, uh, you know, uh, gathered a bunch of my friends uh, to start a setter. And um, uh, for setter, we're not really building another different blockchain because back then there were a lot of people building different kinds of blockchains. But we know fundamentally on layer one, there is always this bottleneck of consensus that you cannot surpass a certain threshold of scalability just on layer one. And uh, just as uh, uh, one of my favorite professor in the space always says that uh, uh, every computer science problem can be solved by adding another layer of abstraction. And this is what we, exactly what we do, right? So we, we try to introduce a, a layer two on top of the existing layer one. And by making some optimistic assumption about how people interact with in, inside of layer two, we can accelerate the transaction speed by a lot. And we anchor back this layer two with a lot of optimistic assumption to layer one, so that even if someone tries to cheat and tries to not collaborate with others in this layer two system, we can still bring justice to this layer two system by reverting into this slow pass layer one. So this is like the, the whole premise is how the principle or the philosophy of layer one and layer two um, uh, specifically speaking. And for us, we have been working in the layer two space for very long, et cetera, uh, start to build a state channel technology starting, tw starting 2018. And we are actually the world first to ge launch generalized state channel. So it's not only used, it can be used for payment, but can be used for, for many other things, including general state transition, cross-chain bridging and the cross-chain asset and uh, you know not only asset bridges but also information bridges so these are the uh, you know kind of a bread and butter that we do and this is like kind of a morphed into different uh, directions including some of the interactive gaming uh, that we build but also more recently and uh, you know growing very quickly seller C, C bridge that is uh, a interconnecting uh, bridging solution that connect uh, at this moment the 10 different uh, blockchains and layer tools together uh, by allowing them to transfer assets against each other in an extremely quick and uh, low cost fashion. Uh, you know, in some cases, we're basically reducing the cost of a transfer by more than 100 times and reduce the time of transfer from seven days uh, uh, to something like uh, a three minutes transfer. So this is a kind of on the C bridge side. Uh, but we have also been pushing on other front of uh, layer two technology, including most notably um, rollups. So we build something called the layer two finance, which is a, it's on specialized optimistic rollup. We're not kind of building a general purpose optimistic rollup, but as on specialized optimistic rollup that allows users to access existing DeFi protocols at a fraction of cost by essentially acting as kind of a public transportation system for the DeFi ecosystem. So the user can kind of gather on this DeFi ecosystem together and uh, you know, go to the destination uh, all at once without kind of actually individual issuing transactions. So their cost can be split. So kind of this is a, from a high level what we have, wh wh where we came from and what we have been focusing on uh, more recently. Uh, for C-Bridge especially, uh, we are doing, uh, you know, a, a quite amazing growth. We 
are basically seeing a doubling volume every week on the network to kind of cross chain for cross chain transfers. And uh, you know, I think uh, we launched uh, three weeks ago and now just uh, broke uh, the $30 million uh, total volume uh, mark. So we're pretty exciting about the, the future directions uh, as well. Wow, that's very interesting. So uh, tell me, uh, what are the applications that people use most? And also what are people using the bridge most? Uh, to which blockchains are they going? Yeah, yeah. So I think that's uh, that's a great question. Right? So, so, you know, for the, uh, the reason we kind of started uh, out to, to uh, build out this bridge and, uh, you know, why we think people will kind of use this bridge is really try to uh, kind of merge multiple blockchains together, right? So if you ask someone, hey, how many blockchains you guys use today? If you ask any DeFi farmer, they're probably going to say, okay, I'm using five or six different kind of blockchains to do DeFi farming these days, right? So um, the multi-chain is definitely going to be reality. And this is like how we're kind of addressing that need of quickly transferring liquidity across different chains without uh, actually going back to a layer one and then go back to a different chain or go back to a different layer two. So uh, what we can see on Seabridge these days is that uh, a lot of the DeFi farmers, DAX traders are using Seabridge to cross chains. And uh, you know we see a lot of volume from uh, uh, Binance chain, Binance Smart Chain. We're seeing a lot of volume from uh, uh, Polygon. We're seeing a lot of volume from Avalanche. And, um, you know, uh, we recently added the Phantom, but we're also seeing Phantom's, uh, uh, you know, volume start to uptick. And uh, most recently, we added the support for Arbitrum and uh, Optimistic, or Optimism, which are the two um, Ethereum layer two roll-up solutions, yeah. right? So, uh, you know, the, the biggest uh, pain point for these roll-up solution is that when the user wants to withdraw liquidity from the roll-up, back to layer one or move liquidity from row up to a different layer two, it takes seven days challenge period for the liquidity to actually move. And the cost is extremely high. It's cost hundreds of dollars to actually move the liquidity. So for from small users, like, uh, you know, if you, if you have hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars, uh, you know, who deposited into the chain, getting out is actually very painful. It's like 10% is haircut and uh, wait seven days. So we're here to solve that problem for the users. And we're seeing a lot of such transactions, like the medium sized transaction we're seeing on Arbitrum and Optimism is around uh, uh, 1.5K, basically. That's kind of like the medium sized transaction. So we're fulfilling a lot of that need. And uh, you know, people are moving from Arbitrum to uh, Optimism or Arbitrum to Binance Chain or Arbitrum to Polygon or and vice versa very quickly without kind of a, this huge friction. We're, we're very happy to see that happen. So this is really kind of fulfilling the needs where users are balancing the portfolio, where user are traders are kind of trying to take different kind of arbitrage opportunities in a much more efficient way. Without this kind of C bridge infrastructure, the entire economic efficiency of this multi-chain future is going to be very low. And we're here to bridge that gap to really kind of bring efficiency and bring market efficiency to this entire market. Um, but uh, you know, we're seeing this uh, as uh, a more uh, more than kind of just uh, uh, a DeFi-oriented uh, solution, uh, even though there are a lot of users using this today are oriented towards DeFi applications, but we're starting to see users start to kind of uh, migrate between different their uh, different different kind of NFTs and uh, migrate between chains in terms of like a different gaming assets as well that is picking up. So you know, for us, we're really kind of a general purpose bridge. Uh, but the, uh, the early adoption shows that we are kind of uh, addressing an extremely uh, urgent pain point for some of the users, especially kind of DeFi users. I see, I understand. Uh, so tell me, how do you incentivize the use of uh, Seabridge uh, and how does it work from a technical point of view? Yeah, so, uh, you know, so first, uh, I guess, I guess uh, you know, uh, let me just kind of answer that incentivize uh, question uh, quickly. So. Right now, there is no incentivization for you know, use Seabridge. We're, we don't run liquidity mi mining. We don't run liquidity yield mining of any source. Uh, if, if we're talking about incentive, using Seabridge itself is really just the incentive, right? So like, you know, if you're not using Seabridge, what's user, what users are facing is a seven day delay plus hundreds of dollars of cost, right? So if they're using Seabridge, it's 20 cents um, plus like three minutes wait. So it's a no-brainer to actually use Seabridge, 
uh, in that sense. There's like no, uh, no need to kind of have additional liquidity mining to say, okay, we want to drive the volume. We're not, we don't really want to drive the volume high. We really just want to address the, uh, the user's pricing need. So this is like how we're doing this. And uh, you know, for C-Bridge as of today, the C-Bridge architecture is an entirely non-custodial architecture. We are not running a centralized uh, broker. We're not running a centralized entity. This is all based on the state channel technology that we previously built. So when the user are sending fund to what we call liquidity provider or what we call C-Bridge node for individual nodes running and managing their own liquidity and trying to kind of bridge for the users, the user is sending a conditional payment to this bridge node. And the bridge node, upon seeing this conditional payment, will be forwarding that same conditional payment on the destination chain. Right? So basically, user is paying the liquidity provider in the source chain, and the liquidity provider will be forwarding user the money on the destination chain. Right? But at this time, uh, you know, how can we how can we make sure that the middleman, the liquidity provider or the C bridge node, cannot just grab users' money in the wrong way. Well, this is where the state channel technology comes in play, where the entire transfer process is non-custodial in the sense that when the user is sending out the transaction, there's a lock associated with it. So only when the user sees that on the destination chain, the same transaction with the same lock is sent to him or his stress on the destination chain, he will review the lock, basically saying, okay, now the liquidity provider, you can claim my fund in the destination chain because I can claim your fund in this, uh, sorry, uh, you can claim my fund in the, on the source chain because I can uh, I can claim your fund in the destination chain. So it's kind of, kind of a, a act as kind of a lock step. And this is called, uh, uh, you know, in a very simple term, hash lock, uh, uh, conditional hash lock function. So this is uh, uh, how we're kind of uh, uh, realizing this uh, kind of functionality and capability here. I think so. Bridges is yeah. so important these days uh, to bridge all of this ecosystem. So many blockchains, while some will remain more important, Ethereum perhaps is still the strongest one. But um, as the ecosystem grows, um, it's great to have bridges that can help us to move around. And so, thank you for working in order to improve this ecosystem for all of us. Um, what is your view of the current layer two ecosystem? Um, we were expecting sort of like a layer two. Uh, summer, like yeah. a, a uh, summer, do you think the summer happened or we are slowly going towards that? Perhaps we're going to have a layer to winter. What is your view? Yeah, so, you know, uh, I, I think I think I would rather say this not necessary as a kind of, a, I, I guess, I guess the question really first is that how do we define layer two at this point, right? So a lot of users are, uh, are using the definition of layer two in a very strict sense. In the sense that uh, the layer two, uh, you know, when we when we first come out, which is very technically correct, is that a, you know, a layer two is the true layer two. If the security of the layer two does not rely on anything else, but can revert always back to the layer one security model, right? So uh, this is a, what what we when we talk about layer two in 2018, this is a, what we have been talking about, but. Most recently, with Polygon, with Avalanche, with the Binance chain, with many of these side chains, people are also treating these side chains, even though that they have absolutely no security tie to the entire kind of Ethereum layer one ecosystem, also as layer twos, right? So uh, it's fair in the sense that a lot of the assets on these chains are bridged from Ethereum, basically. So it's in a sense that, uh, you know, economically tied into Ethereum, basically kind of a uh, uh, in, in a very interesting way. So, uh, you know, I would say uh, the layer two summer, uh, you know, is already happening. Like if you look at Solana, if you look at uh, Avalanche, you look at Phantom, you look at, the, you know, previously Binance Chain, Polygon, uh, it's already happening. So it's really not a layer two future, but like a, a layer two summer, but a multi-chain summer where like you have a, a Ethereum as kind of a big um, hub of uh, kind of an economic, uh, you know, uh, sense. And then you have a different kind of a layer tools with different security assumptions that is branching out. And this is where kind of a, we see a multi-chain future will really flourish. And uh, you know, uh, we believe that with uh, the most recent launch of Arbitrum and Optimism, there will definitely be more projects getting on these real layer tools. Because in this ecosystem, legitim legitim legitimacy really matters, right? So like they are the legitimate layer two and the people are interested in kind of getting on the legitimate layer two. 
And uh, you know, we will see a lot of influx of project on that aspect as well, for sure. So you know, I'm very much looking forward to uh, layer two. Uh, you know, autumn, you know, fall probably not summer. We're kind of at the tail of summer already. So uh, you know, but uh, yeah, it's it's definitely unfolding and happen. Very cool. So what is next yeah. for Salem Network? What are you, what's in your plan? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a great question as well. Like, so you know, for us, uh, we really just uh, keep pushing on the uh, interoperability of uh, layer two. As I said, like multi-chain is going to be a future for quite some time. So uh, our goal is to use our uh, our own layer two uh, technology, which is not kind of layer two chain, but like uh, the interconnected uh, technology to connect all these layer two together in a very smooth way. Right, so we launched our Seabridge version one, but we're also making a very big update for Seabridge uh, uh, as a solution. So we're enabling our state guardian network, which is uh, uh, a, a, a validator network for layer two uh, to act as uh, uh, the bridging node for one of the bridging node for a Seabridge. So that basically the users and LPs can kind of use the Seabridge in a much more easier way that basically allows the, the, uh, the seller Seabridge uh, uh, to kind of uh, augment on uh, what we would call state guardian network and the liquidity provider will be very easily to provide liquidity without them actually running a Seabridge node. So this is what we have been kind of working towards and also uh, releasing soon in the future. Um, and uh, also like uh, on the layer two finance side, uh, we're also launching another upgraded version of layer two finance. And uh, you know, with a lot more protocol support and uh, strategy support, uh, so we also very much look forward to that front as well. Very interesting. Um, so are there any community initiatives that our viewers could get uh, involved right now? Perhaps some hackathons or competitions. Anything that you would like our viewers to know? Yeah, uh, not not at this point, but we 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 engage with our community in a pretty active way. Uh, so definitely follow us on our Twitter, and uh, you know also uh, follow our uh, our Telegram channel, especially announcement channel. And uh, we probably have uh, the layer two finance, uh, uh, you know, sorry, the the Seabridge uh, uh, version two uh, testnet coming up very soon. Uh, so on that front, uh, uh, feel free to participate uh, in that activity as well. Sure, I'll make sure that I leave the links below this uh, YouTube video for the viewers to subscribe and to follow Stellar Network on Twitter and on Telegram. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for coming to Layer 2 Show. It was really interesting to learn more and to understand your view about the current ecosystem. Thank you for building. Thank you for your patience. And let's look forward for the right future together. Yeah, definitely. Let's, uh, let's do this together. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah, it's glad to be here.